Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a really short video actually, but um, I was reading, I don't remember where the article was, but it had to do with the issue with uh, Swiss movements and uh, ETA and a bunch of um, the Swiss companies basically saying, yeah, we're not going to uh, supply our parts anymore. And I was reading an interesting article, um, and I don't remember where it was, it was on the internet somewhere obviously. But it was talking with the the uh, leadership of both Salida and Saprad um, movement makers, and I was thinking about it, and uh, probably because I was looking at like thinning out the collection a little bit, kind of focusing on a couple of specific pieces right now, and then go forward from there. And I was thinking about, you know, what. Well, I was starting to take in consi into consideration the limit on parts. Um, and, you know, being a... I, I own, you know, a couple Steinharts, a couple Christopher Wards, a few mid-tier brands that mostly use Etta or Salita or, or Saprad. Um, and I've noticed those brands tend to lean more now towards working on their own in-house parts and using Saprad or Salida rather than Etta. And I think what you're going to start seeing is is more of that trend, essentially. Um, obviously, I think both of those brands have limits on what they can actually, they, a numbers they can push out and movements and parts, essentially. But but um, I've, I've read specifically where Christopher Ward has said he would rather have the Salida version of his own watch than the Etta version. Um, and at this point, I'd agree. I, well, I'd agree and I wouldn't. Um, you know, the only Christopher Wards that um, are in my collection are a 2893. So essentially, 2890, a 2824 uh, with GMT, uh, the, the basic ETA GMT movement. Um, and then uh, highly customized movement. Um, so highly customized, Christopher Ward can probably service that themselves. Um, the Etta GMT, I'm not so sure, but I have a feeling, you know, Saprad and Salida especially, since Salida has been ma making Etta movements for years, if they haven't got all the parts already produced for all of these different movements, they've mostly made 2824s, I think, but. It wouldn't be hard for Salita to just buy a few <laughs> at uh, GMT watches, figure out what parts they need to make, and start making the parts. And I think what you're going to start seeing is you're going to start seeing, you know, independent watchmakers buying parts from Salita to f to service at a movements, uh, because I mean they're really the same thing anyways. Uh, a Salita is just an Etta made on newer machines, essentially. Um, now, Saprad's movements are a little bit different, but they're based on the same basic template. So I think you'll see uh, companies like Steinhardt, you know, start focusing more and more on using Saprad movements instead of Etta movements. And you've already seen it. Uh, Steinhardt's already tried to basically and has, has essentially made their own Etta 2824 clone. Now, right now, they're not really using it much. And I think that's because they have to order a certain amount of Etta's probably per year to keep getting Etta's while the supply lasts. So they're probably, you know, working through that. But once they can't get the Etta's anymore, uh, I would imagine, you know, they're going to pretty much use their own cloned movement and Saprods, and that's it. And that doesn't surprise me at all. And to be honest, I'd rather have it that way. If Saprod doesn't limit the parts that to for servicing then I'd rather have the Saprad movement than the Etta. I mean, that's just the way it is. It was just an interesting thing I was thinking about. And I'd like to hear what you guys think, but honestly, I think this is going to be good for the other Swiss movement makers that are not from the Swatch group. Um, I think I think those are going to be the Swiss people who really benefit. Um, I think, I think uh, well... For me, I would rather now be buying a movement with a, a watch with a Salida in it rather than a Etta, um, and I'd rather have a Saprad than an Etta at this point. 
I mean, it's not necessarily the movements are any better, um, but I think they'll be easier to service, and that's important. So yeah, I'm probably going to get a used Speedmaster, Omega Speedmaster at some point. Um, I have one or two Rolexes on the list, you know. Um, but beyond that, if I get anything, it's probably not going to be something from the Swatch Group. Sorry, Swatch. Sorry, Etta. Sorry, Omega. But that's about it. And pretty much everything I buy is going to be used, not brand new. I'm going to pay whoever else paid for I'm going to pay the guy who paid for it before. I'm not going to pay the uh, act, you know, authorized dealer uh, retail price for something that they're either not going to service or are going to charge me too much to service. So, yeah, I say power to it. I hope Salida and Saprad take over and uh, at least equal Etta. But that's what I think is going to happen. So uh, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Do you think um, Salida and Saprad are going to start building themselves over the next decade or so to be a rival to Etta? Um, or is it only going to be the Chinese and Japanese that can rival them? Uh, I mean, we know Seiko can. They make a lot of movements. Um, the Chinese are generally seen as inferior even to the Japanese. I mean, I even feel that way to a degree. Um, but do you think it's the Chinese and Japanese that are going to benefit? Or is it those other Swiss movement makers that are going to benefit? I'm interested to hear what you guys think. I tend to lean towards the, uh, the other Swiss movement makers will start benefiting, assuming they don't follow suit. But I don't think Salida and Saprad are dumb enough to do what Etta and the Swatch Group are doing. Uh, I think Saprad and Salida see this as a, an advantage or a, a, a chance for them. And for them, I think it's all about having the capital to build an infrastructure that can handle the numbers that they're going to need to produce. So anyways, now that I'm rambling and ranting all at once, if you have any thoughts, please leave them in the comments below or make a video response. I would love to hear what you have to think. I know Guido Pelagos and the Distinguished Gentleman uh, have both made videos on the topic probably about a month ago each, I think. But uh, I thought I'd just weigh in with my take at this point after I've kind of mulled it over and thought about it for a while and started looking at where am I going to go down the road. So thanks for watching. Until next time.